Good evening, friends of the inner sanctum. This is your host to welcome you through the squeaking door. Say, do you ever find that you can't get a certain face out of your mind? Until you do, go out of your mind. Hmm? Like me and a guy named Joe, for instance. I ran into Joe accidentally the other day over at the city morgue. And Joe's been haunting me ever since. I can't get over the smug way he deadpanned me and then gave me the old cold shoulder routine. I don't want to cry, baby, but I dug down plenty time and again to keep Joe from going under. But no gratitude. No gratitude at all from Joe. Mister, I'm finished with Joe for keep. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Murder Takes a Honeymoon, was written by John Robert and stars Everett Sloan in the role of George with Ann Shepard as Mary. And now for tonight's free lesson in how to improve your screen. <laughs> Ever get that folksy, woodsy feeling until you're in an absolute frenzy to get away from it all and go native? Hmm? Well, our honeymooning couple tonight got the urge until they found that living in the country was simply murder. To rhyme it, our twosome found it positively gruesome. <laughs> Stand by, and we'll demonstrate. We're on a milk train somewhere in the east, huffing through the rock and rubble of desolated whistle stop country. The yellow train lights blink eerily. The hour is sometime between night and morning. One car holds just a young couple. They huddle closely, half asleep, as the train groans into another of its interminable stops. Train Edward! Entering Raymond Edward! That stop Lawson! Raymond Edward! George. I've heard him say Lawson, too. No. Raymond Edward. Lawson's next. Oh. Oh, there must be a million of these one-horse towns. What's eating you, Mary? Oh, you look like you've just been declared an orphan. I feel like an orphan, George. Cold. I'm hungry. I'm far from home. We're heading home, kid. At the next stop, there's a farm. More land than you can cover in a day, and it's all yours. Wedding gift from me to you. I'm sorry, but... The country's not for me. I'm a big city girl. Ah, oh, give it a try, huh? Come on, smile. Georgia, I'm frightened. Of me? I don't know. You've suddenly changed. Buying a farm, packing up without warning, leaving New York. And all in such a hurry. <laughs> I'm an impulsive kid. That's how I married you, remember? I dated you blind, waltzed you around once, and boom. On an impulse, I hustled you to City Hall. I bought the farm the same way. The way it happened, it, it's as if you were running away from something. Running to something, kid. I'm tired of the creeps and the phonies and the crumbs. I'm tired of stale beer, cheap movies, and crowds. Ah, okay, skip it. I'm thirsty. You want me to fetch you a drink? No, thanks. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Your imagination's gone crazy. You're overtired. George, look. What's that? An envelope. Someone dropped it on my lap. It fell to the floor. Give it to me. What does it say? A crank note. Some country idiot's playing black hand. Let me read it. We don't like strangers in Lewiston. Especially New Yorkers. Better be smart and read the train schedule back. There's a return train schedule attached to it. Oh, you look as if you're already on that train back. You scare easy, huh? How did anyone know we were coming? Well, that's easy. The real estate man who sold me Rain Tree Farms no doubt stuck the item in the local papers. Oh, 
come on. Shrug it off as a crackpot practical joke. A joke? You really want me to believe that someone drove ten miles in the middle of the night to warn us off? Just to be funny? <laughs> I'm laughing. Grab that other suitcase. Come on, step on it, kid. Right, your step. All right, easy does it. There we are. It's so deserted, George. Yeah, everybody's asleep. Well, what do we do? Come on, we'll camp under that station shed. It's nine miles out to Rain Tree Farms, and we'll need somebody to drive us there. I may do that. Oh. Drive you out. And wait in half the night for you. Who are you? Ben, Ben Myers. Lizzie's parked to the side of the chair. You said you've been waiting for me. I did. I'm your neighbor. The shack's just around the bend from Rain Tree Farms. Thought you and the lady'd be glad not to spend the night in the weather. Ah, we're glad, all right, but how did you know we were coming? I read in the papers you bought the old place. But why tonight? Why not last night or tomorrow? How did you know I was coming tonight? <laughs> I've been waiting last night. If you didn't come tonight, I'd watch for you tomorrow. The time ain't worth the leaking bucket. You coming? Yeah, sure. Come on, Mary. Here's the busy, son. Wait to light my pipe and we'll be going. Bring your face to the light, son. I've seen you before, ain't I? I don't think so. You never been around Green Tree Farms? No, I've never seen the place. Honey, you should buy it then. Nobody's tried living in Green Tree Farm now for two years. Why? Some say that it's haunted. Some say there's a black curse on the house. <laughs> you keep asking questions, kid. He'll have you seeing ghosts coming out of the chimney. Not ghosts, son. But corpses. <gasps> corpses. The last couple that tried living in Rain Tree Corners. They're dead in the parlor floor. I seen them with my own eyes. <laughs> dead. Nobody ever found out what killed him. Another mile to the rain through farms, folks. Go on, kid. Grab yourself 40 winks. I can't. I don't close my eyes. <laughs> George, what was that? Stop the car. It was a bullet. Someone put a hot shot at me. Missed you by inches. Check. Almost a bullseye. Somebody's no slouch with a rifle. What's the angle on this, Myers? Can't say. Except that shooting comes naturally to these parts. This is hunting country. In the middle of the night, in the dark? Oh, night's light enough for shooting. Folks around here would rather shoot than sleep. I'm not swallowing that. Somebody tried to kill me. That's a pretty big idea, son. Yeah, well, the idea's even bigger. I figure maybe someone waited along that road in ambush and you fingered me. Maybe that's why you waited around all hours at the depot. You were to drive me to my murder. There we are, folks. Grand Trip Arms. Ours is up that walk. All right, hand me the luggage, Mary. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the lift. Your young man ain't thanking me. <laughs> His head's busy turning with big ideas. Goodbye, son. I'll be coming around, maybe. There's some more of your big ideas. Look, if I ever see you around here, I'll shoot you full of holes on sight for trespassing. <laughs> Yeah? About that shot on the road coming here, why would anyone want to murder you? 
You're a stranger. To keep me away from Rain Tree Farms, I guess. But why, if you own it? Why is a big letter, kid. George, you're concealing something. Who are you? <laughs> George Stretch, your husband. A stranger to me until ten days ago. Who are you, really? Oh, look, kid, you're letting some local crackpot give you the willies. Mary, a guy said something about for better or for worse just before I slipped a ring on your finger. Was it all a lot of idle talk? No, George. I meant it deep down. I'm sorry. That's more like it. What do you say we forget the spook stuff and hit the sack, huh? Coming? Mm Mm-hmm. Boy, this joint sure needs a loving touch. And a coat of paint. Well, now to find the key. Uh-uh. Wrong key. The real estate office mailed me five different keys. George. Now what? Somebody's inside. I see a moving light. Yeah. The footsteps coming to the door. What do you have to, mister? Well, I... I was trying to get in. What's the shotgun for? Protection. You need it. Yeah. I've seen you somewhere before, haven't I? No, you haven't. I, I've never been somewhere. Who are you? I'm George Stretch. This is my wife. We're the new owners. Who are you? Parker. Willis Parker. I mean, what are you doing here? Squatting. What? You broke in? No. I moved in. Just like that? Uh Uh-huh. Abandoned place. Loaded down with county tax warrants. I bought a tax warrant and I'm in. I don't get it. Squad is right. Go see a lawyer. You mean you won't get out? That's right. On what ground? Look, fella. Right now I've got possession of the premises. That's a big chunk of the law around here. I'm not going to stand out here in the dark arguing it out with you. I'll beat it, fella. And take your valises and the dame. You're trespassing. Now, this is a trick to turn me back. Throw arguing with you. Start moving. The next one goes right in your bread basket, fella. And keep going. Mary. Yes, George. Head for the deep shadows and then drop to your knees and flatten out quick. I'm sick and tired of being shot at. George, put that gun away. Down, I said. I'm not heading back with my tail between my legs. Bullseye for me. Who was it that said this was a shooting country? He's dead. Oh, gee, I... I just meant to nick him. You killed him in cold blood. In self-defense. He was planning to tail us down the road and blow us to kingdom come. George, you're making that up. Just as an afterthought. Am I, kid? Who do you suppose took that shot at us driving up here? And that couple found mysteriously dead, the couple old Myers mentioned. Who do you suppose killed them? I want the whole truth. Why were you marked for murder? I said why was a big letter. You got a ditch pocket somewhere. Ditch him? Hide him to protect ourselves, then forget that it ever happened and go about our business. You're not going to the police? No, I'm going about my business, I said. George, what are you afraid of? You got me confused with the answer, man. I've got to know or I'll lose my mind. Both Ben Myers and Parker thought they recognized you. You have been here before. Never, I swear, never. They they had me confused with, with somebody else. I'll play along my way for a while. My way is the only way, Mary. Any other way is no good. I'll get that kerosene lamp and follow along. I'm giving Parker squatters rights to the first big ditch I find. He'll stay put now. Oh, come on, kid. Dry your eyes. You've got to take the breaks as they come and play along, for better or for worse. For better or worse? Murder and burial. How far can we get together now? As far as the house, anyhow. That's as far as I want to get. And I don't care how stiff the price is. You get it, Mary? I don't care. All 
right now. Set the lamp on that table, Mary. And stop staring at me as if I were some kind of a man-eating monster. You're getting on my nerves. I'm sorry, George. All right, that's better. Look around you. What do you see? The room is a wreck. Check and double check. The paneling's ripped out. The floorboards are up. Someone started taking the fireplace apart brick by brick. <laughs> My property buy doesn't look so good, huh? George. What? What does it mean? Vandals always have a field day with an abandoned property. No, it means something else. Check, kid. Parker, hold up here looking for something. And you're looking for something, too. You're catching on, kid. That's why we're in this forsaken country. That's why you were marked for murder. What are you looking for, George? A couple of things. One of them is a stiff. A fresh-faced kid who called himself Johnny Morrow came out here about two years ago. He was never seen again. Alive. And you know why, Mary? Why? Because he's still here. My kid brother never left this house. Alive or dead. Whoever bricked up this fireplace and bricked it up to keep... George, if you find your brother, what then? Then I go right for item number two. The jackpot. The jackpot? Do, re, me, cash. Money piled as high as the Empire State. We parlay the corpse into a fortune. Yeah, that does it. The hole's big enough to drive a truck through. Bring that lamp over. Closer. Closer, you dummy. Yes, George. See what I see? <gasps> Walled in as if he was part of the building layout. Meet your brother-in-law, Mary. All right. Help me drag him out. Yes, George. Set him down over here. When he was a kid, he always came running to me when he got into a jam. There was a year's difference, but we were lookalikes. That's why the old man and Parker thought they'd seen you before. Check. They'd seen Johnny. Who killed your brother? His partner, a hoodlum named Wiley. Johnny and Wiley had pulled a payroll stick up, a $50,000 job. Wiley tried to double-cross Johnny. Johnny holed up here with the payroll money. Wiley trailed Johnny out here, tortured him for weeks, and then killed him. Why? Why did Wiley torture Johnny? To find out where Johnny had stashed the money. But Johnny never told him. Johnny knew his goose was cooked anyway. How did you find out these things? Johnny smuggled a letter out addressed to me through old Ben Myers. The letter said nothing but said a lot. Small talk, everyday brother stuff. Wrapped around two key words. The words were, search me. Yeah. As kids, we used to play treasure hunt with maps we made up and sewed in the lining of our clothes. A dollar gets you a thousand that Johnny has a map sewn in his clothes. Now you don't have to ask why anymore, kid. But, but what? Uh, who was Parker? The man we found here? A crook who hung around with Wally. And all the time that's elapsed, why didn't you come here sooner? I was busy looking for Wiley for two years across the country and back again in South America, Mexico. Wiley was always one jump ahead of me. I caught up with him a month ago in Tampico. You caught up with him? Well, what did you do? I gave him a dose of what he gave Johnny. And then I killed him. <laughs> You'd have lost that dollar bet, kid. Same trick we had as kids. Yeah, a map inside his coat lining. You can read it? Sure, like the ABC. The dough is buried in a can five steps from the back door to the barn. Ah, the dough is practically in my hand. George, you'll have to give the money back. Back? Huh? And give myself up with it, huh? Yes, if you can find the courage. And tell Johnny he died like a chump for nothing. And tell myself I was just a sentimental sap dogging it after Wiley right into Tampico. And maybe get down on my knees in front of that ditch out there and apologize to Parker if I haven't put a slug in him. Out of your mind. Out of my mind if I listen to you. I'll lend a hand. Grab Parker's shotgun and watch for intruders while I dig that can up. And then I'll bury Johnny right on the same spot. 
Yeah, I'll bury Johnny right where he stashed those 50 G's for his big brother to come and get. Clink is the jackpot. Like music, eh, Mary? Listen to it. Now, look. You see the money, Mary? Green as grass. Just as I dreamed of it for two years. Just as Johnny and I dreamed of it as kids. Green money, green as grass. <laughs> and nothing under a hundred. You ever see a bank roll with nothing under a hundred before, Mary? Did you? No, George. This is I what? can recollect. Stan Ederson. What? I seen small change. Five dollar bill one. I ain't ever seen a hundred before. What are you doing here, Ben? Rejoicing with you, son. I've been waiting and watching a long time for one of you to find that money. But I knew it was hid somewhere around here. <laughs> and I'm an old man. Very much time for me to enjoy my share. How much is your share? I was calculating on a quarter, maybe. And I saw you put Parker away. Right now, I'm calculating on, say, half. And what are you calculating on doing with half? I don't know, for sure. Treat myself to something good. Maybe buy myself some more land. What do you say, son? You made yourself a deal, Pop. I'm going to give you all the land you need. You're aiming to kill me. George, no! I got to, Mary. I'm not killing you, old man. When you came visiting just now, you committed suicide. <coughs> Get up against that tree and turn around. Maybe if I go back to calculating the quarter... I said you committed suicide. <laughs> I'll bury you with a hundred-dollar bill in your hand so you can treat yourself to something good where you're going. Ready? I said you was a winner, son. Guess I am a loser. So long, sucker. Oh, 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 oh. oh Mary, you fool. You, you shot me. I had to do it, George. I had to save you from yourself. Silly fool. I was going to make you a queen. No, George. It wouldn't have been that way. After then, you would have had to kill me. You see, no power on earth would make me go your way. And no power on earth would make you go mine. You saved my life, Mom. How can an old idiot ever thank you? By going to the police. My husband has a confession to make. <laughs> It got so she couldn't see the trees for the body. <laughs> you know, until tonight, I thought only Santa Claus came through the fireplace. Well, I guess everybody's doubling up everywhere nowadays. Like George. Mary's bullet left him doubled up. <laughs> Still, that was a good choice of location. The fireplace for a corpse. Sort of uh, how to keep from growing cold. Ha, 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 ha.